You're listening to WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings, community radio with global soul. And I am happy to have you listening to us this morning on Savannah Lexicon, a fine, fine Thursday morning. Um. Hope everybody is doing well. Okay, and again, our guest this morning is David Gerald, uh, Society President with the Deep South Orchid Society. How are you doing, David? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. And let me also mention here, before I go any further, a couple of housekeeping things to keep in mind. Uh, for one thing... I want uh, to give the old disclaimer, the general disclaimer. The viewpoints expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of WRUU, its license holder, or its staff. Okay? So they're not worried about David. They're worried about me. But uh, we, we do want we do want to do that. And let's see what other kinds of things we've got going. Well, I guess uh, I guess that's about it for the time being. Um, okay. Now, David. Yes. Oh, let me. Oh, there is one more thing. Let me just mention real quick that uh, David will be with us through probably uh, almost three quarters of the show. But um, the final 15 minutes are going to be me just kind of closing out and telling you some things that are going on. But I also have a little bit of a commentary to make, Uh, a rather extended one that really I've never done the likes of. But I don't know. This uh, recent situation with the Lucas Theater is uh, such that I just feel compelled to make some kind of comment about all that stuff. So that's going to be towards the tail end of the show so you're going to want to stay for that if if you're going to want to stay anyway but that that should be interesting but i i do have a few things to say about that and uh, yes 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 um so again david (laughs) we're back you're still there i am i'm glad you for hanging on um yeah, the Deep South Orchid Society, and you guys, the 31st annual, if I have this right, and correct me if mm-hmm. I'm wrong, 31st annual Orchid Show, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, April 29, 30, and May 1st. No, it's the 28th no. through the 30th. The 28th through the 30th. Yeah. Okay. It is Friday, Saturday, yes, Sunday? Yes, it is. Okay, I just got my dates wrong <laughs> somehow. All right. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 28, 29, and 30. Yes. Out at the Coastal Georgia Botanical Gardens. Exactly. And one of my favorite places in town. And uh, that, you know, sort of, well, I think a lot of people know about them, but, you know, they're not, maybe, maybe some people, they're, not, they're kind of off the beaten path a little bit, uh, you know, when you think of the typical, um, the typical Savannah scenario. So some people may not be aware of them, but it's a great, a great uh, uh place out there a great great way to get into nature um okay now uh just just tell us about what we can expect on this uh on this sale and this orchid uh this orchid extravaganza <laughs> sure um it's our second year out there mm-hmm. and it's actually been a really exciting thing for us because um, orchid shows in the past few years have, have struggled, partly just mm. because um, a lot of folks in Savannah aren't even aware we have an orchid society, even though we've been around for 36 years. Wow. Um, well, hopefully this, and, this will help a few more people out yeah. there know about it. And we were a little limited in our advertising capacity. Mm. So posters in coffee shops and that kind of thing weren't really serving us very well. Mm. So mm. moving to the Botanic Gardens is has been a boon because they have a very strong advertising promotion yeah. uh, system yeah, for themselves absolutely. because they're yeah. they're a public destination and so um, they actually 
maintain their books by getting the public out there. Right, so they are right. interested in having us be a success. Absolutely, they are, I'm sure. Um, okay, so, uh, but but just explain to us a little bit what, what people can expect when they come out there. A lot of orchids, obviously, but I yeah. mean, give us some sense of... Uh, well, the if you haven't been out there, they have a relatively new visitor center, and it's the, the main building when you go in the new entrance, and you'll go through the, as soon as you enter the lobby, that's mm. where our display will be, and it's on top of a, a very large round table. And so okay. as soon as you walk in, you'll see dozens of orchids from our own society members. And then you go into the back space of the building, which is the entire length of the building, and it's an event space, a ballroom, mm. Mm. and we'll have... 10 displays anything from tabletop size to 10 by 10 displays that'll be filled with hundreds of orchids mm. and you'll see That's things be quite a it's it's pretty amazing um and it's not just the orchids people will have things to accent so they're, they're really putting on artistic displays rather than just putting the the orchids out for people to look at mm. so everything's designed to look really good we'll have <laughs> background music <laughs> yeah okay um, nice i mean trying to, what, what, to, to set the atmosphere <laughs> when you say that i mean what are you talking about just, um just some, it's kind some, of jungle some, sounds this year we may some, we some may mix pot. in some some things that okay. kind of traditionally southern like johnny mercer and those kind of things okay okay um so there will be music going on yeah a little always, bit. that's always yeah nice. just, just I mean, so it's know. not just empty space yeah. with voices yeah 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 um but you'll see some orchids you're familiar with, and you'll also see some things that it, you probably would have no idea that it was an orchid. Um, well, yeah, I, I bet. And that's that's the thing, you know, that's intriguing to me, and maybe you can, uh, you know, uh, illuminate for me and, and many of the listeners, too. I mean, because I, I'm, I got to admit, I'm, I'm not a green thumb guy. I, I kill anything I put my hand to, <laughs> and it's it's terrible. Uh, in terms of uh, not people, but in terms of uh, in terms of trying to keep uh, plant life alive, I'm I'm a hopeless wreck apparently. But you know, I mean, flowers are beautiful. I love flowers. My flowers are nice. I mean, what what the the, the kind of the most basic orchid, if if it's even possible to say that, or, or most prevalent around here, the one that m- people most associate as an orchid and know as an orchid is there a particular variety of that that yeah um what you tend to see most in like the the box stores the grocery stores those kind of things Mm -hmm. that's um those are all hybrids from the Mm. genus phalaenopsis oh okay um everything's got a latin name even even ourselves sure sure (laughs) sure um and there are tens of thousands of hybrids of phalaenopsis now and um they're mass produced through uh, tissue culture, cloning and tissue culture to, to mm. bring the best ones up to high numbers that then mm. they can flood the public with. Yeah, um, There are growers out there that supply these locations that have acres and acres and acres of greenhouses. Now, in that particular variety, I mean, are they all the same color always? Or, I mean, um, <clears throat> some I mean, the, color the, variation? I mean, obviously the, there's going to be a little variation. Yeah, but. the a particular type of phalaenopsis is going to produce a certain type of flower. Right. Um, there are some types that, especially those if you see spotted patterns on them, mm-hmm. um, that depending on the environment they're in, the spotting can be more or less dense or the spots can be different sizes and that kind of thing. Because some of those colors are sensitive to temperature. Right. Um, depends on how they develop. Are, are, are orchids... For some reason, I have the idea that orchids are sort of delicate or or not something that you can just kind of let grow and go, or, or am I completely wrong on that? A lot of folks think that um, any plant's going to have its particular requirements, yeah. and the things we've learned to call house plants are, for the most part, the things that will survive in a home, which is not an yeah. optimal environment sure, for sure. any plant, sure. <laughs> but True. They'll, they'll do all right. Um uh, if you take orchids, the ones that tend to do the best are the ones that can do better in lower light, which is what you find in a home versus, say, a greenhouse. Right. Um, those that can handle the, the lower humidity that you might find in a home, especially in the summer when you've got the heat on or, or winter if it dries out. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I guess you don't have the heat on in the summer, do you? Well, okay. I was, I was going to let that slide. but since Oops, you... <laughs> It's still early. Yes. No, I know. I know exactly. But yes. that homes can typically be drier than the environment they're from. And most of the orchids people are used to are actually tropical plants. They're, their ancestors are in the jungles of the Philippines and mm, New right. Guinea and Borneo and that kind of thing. Yeah. Wow. Much different. Yeah. yeah. Well. <laughs> uh yeah. Okay. So you're talking about different uh, variations among different varieties of orchids, or are there some variation in terms of are they all going to be needing the care generally, essentially no, there's the same? Actually a, a, there's certain orchids like Phalaenopsis and a few others that okay. are considered kind of beginner orchids because they can handle the lighting you get in a typical home. Okay. The, so there, that kind there of is. Thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's some others that are a little more a little more challenging. Uh, mostly, it's the amount of light, or maybe it's actually a home may be too hot or too cold, depending mm, on where they're mm, from. Sure. Um, hmm. Yeah. See, this is all these variables. This, <laughs> this is why I have a black thumb. Well, of it. part one thing most people don't realize is um, the orchids are actually the largest family of plants at this point in time. There's over thirty thousand species. Wait and a minute. The largest. Largest family. Family of plants, period. Yes. Wow. And you can find them on every single continent, including the most northern island of Antarctica. Really? Yes. Wow. That's got to be a short growing season. I would <laughs> yeah. Think. yeah, you're not going to see those in most people's homes. <laughs> wow. That's amazing, though. The The largest group mm-hmm. of any and all plants. Yeah, and they're still finding them because if wow. they go into a new new region in the tropics and they knock down a tree, which unfortunately is happening a lot, mm. and they look on the branches because a lot of those orchids are actually they're called epiphytes. They're growing on trees mm. for support, right? Along with lots of other things, mm. and so they'll knock down a tree in a place they haven't been before, and they'll find new things there that no one's described. Wow. Well, they must be. You know, I mean, quite adaptable or quite you know i mean hardier than perhaps i would have thought i mean if they're if they if they're that prolific around the world well they're very adaptable um, very adaptable they, yeah. they they kind of i mean in terms of just evolutionary history they're very mm-hmm. adaptable mm-hmm. um new environments open up and they, they tend to have the capacity to at least move in and test the waters because the way they reproduce it's it's kind of like starfish they they go by numbers versus quality so they make right up to millions of seeds that yeah. don't have a lot of energy reserve but they can travel a really long distance right. so if they happen to right. land in the right place yeah they can establish themselves yeah yeah yeah, yeah. all right let, let's just take uh, just a minute now and tell us you, you your website mm-hmm. for the orchid society what is that it's deep south orchid society.com okay and this is based in savannah or, yeah, yeah, the uh, Orchid Society has been here for about 36 years. Right, And okay. in those 36 years, this is now going to be the 31st show. Okay, wow. All right, and <clears throat> I'm assuming that, you know, you're, you're always interested in new members, I would suppose. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. these kind of clubs are have been struggling recently because, yeah. of course, everyone has access to the Internet. And yeah. so any of these kinds of um, hobby clubs... Have, right. have struggled because the membership's getting older and it's harder to get right. new members to join. Right. So yeah, right. um, the show's been good for us to get to get some new members. And last mm. year we signed up, I think, about twenty new people. Nice um, at the show, That's and we're good. hoping to do so this year as well. But we meet um, every month on the second Sunday out at the same location where the show is. Oh, okay. At two That's o'clock. A beautiful, nice place to be. Anyway, yes, it is. Um, we have. <clears throat> Regular speakers. Some of them are our members. Some of them are invited speakers that come in mm-hmm. and talk about whatever topic they, they choose that's of interest to us. Um, we have either raffle tables or sale tables, depending on the, who the speaker is. They may bring their own things to sell. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Members bring in their own plants that are flowering to show off to everybody else, and we, we well, do a little informal yeah. judging. Well, why not? So, yeah. I do I do informal judging all the time. It has nothing yes. to do with flowers. Yeah. It's usually people, but, but uh, that's yeah. a whole different thing. We try to mix up who judges every month, <laughs> and people get worried. Well, I don't know what what to judge for, and it's like, and we always tell them, pick what you like. <clears throat> yeah, none of the members are 
um, AOS or American Orchid Society certified judge, judges. We'll have those at the show. And they have okay. certain criteria, but the members aren't, don't. They just pick what they think is pretty or what is different or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Now, is this your big event of the year? I mean, definitely. Yeah, this um, is most, this is a big most board. orchid societies uh, do one show a year. Uh, depending on where you are in the country, they can be massive events that bring in lots of people and have always for years. Mm, <laughs> Especially mm. down in places like Florida or Hawaii, yeah. Southern oh, California, boy, they can bring in huge crowds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so. Uh, does does anybody? I mean, I guess everybody at this show or or, or showing showing at the show, if you will, is is uh, is probably local or. Um, well, there's our society, but then we have three other orchid societies coming in, mm. and we have seven vendors. But the okay. orchid societies, the, um, there's two others from Georgia and then one from South Carolina. Okay. Where um, do you remember? Do you know where? Yes. You remember oh where yeah. Is? Yeah. Okay. Um, the Atlanta Orchid Society is coming oh, okay. in. And they're yep. they're a very strong supporter of us. Um, Good, and you um, would think they would be a pretty big club, I guess. Uh, yes, and they just had their show a couple months ago at the Atlanta Botanic Gardens, which ah. I really highly recommend people go yeah. visit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's beautiful they too. Have a, I've been there. A gigantic orchid display that's continuously available to the public. Mm. Lots of really pretty things. <laughs> nice. Um, the Coastal Carolina Orchid Society is also joining us. Okay, yeah, and that's... then the. Uh, Orchid Society of Aiken and Augusta. Okay. Is also from, from Georgia, of course. All right. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. So lots and lots of orchids. Yes. And the the vendors will also have displays as well. And what 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 do you think will be on display there as far as vendors go? I mean, just um, supply it's, stuff. It's maybe? a mix. And, we we try to have a variety of things so that the vendors um instead of having vendors that all have exactly the same type of orchids, we try to have uh, a mix so that you can choose from a lot of things. Um, some will tend to be to have selections that are a little more similar to what you would see in the grocery store, but often mm-hmm. the quality is maybe a little better. Mm-hmm. Um, but they'll have things that you may not be familiar with at all. And each, each grower tends to specialize in a different selection. Mm. Um, and then we're going to have one supplier or one vendor who's going to have nothing but supplies. Okay. Uh, potting mixes, pots, yeah, things yeah. for hanging them, all all kinds of things. Okay. All right. Excellent. Let me throw something, one thing out there before I forget about it, because I did want to mention this. Now, what, again, 28, 29, and 30, and what time during the day? What, what time is um, it? On Friday the 28th, we mm-hmm. don't open to the public until noon, because that morning we'll be having Ribbon and then American Orchid Society judging up okay. until then, and then we'll open to the public until 5 Okay. Um, we've got a little confusion on some of the websites uh, because uh, we do have a, a later event for the Friends of the Botanic Gardens who are big supporters of the Botanic Gardens themselves. We're going to host them uh, after it's closed to the public. Um, well, so if okay. they haven't gotten their notification, they're certainly welcome to come. All right. All right. Um, and then on Saturday, it's from uh, 9 to 5, and then Sunday from 11 to 4. Okay. Um. Well, then it is through the first, or am I still getting my date wrong? You may be confused because our, our website has because Thursday, some information. Thursday, from, from Friday, last Saturday, year. Sunday. No, right? it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Or Friday, just Friday, yeah. Saturday. Okay, we'll Golly. be setting up on Thursday. <laughs> All right, y'all forgive me. I apparently need some more coffee this morning. Our website does have dates from last year, and they kind of fit more oh, with. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. okay. We're, we're trying to get that updated. That's what. That's what threw me because I did look at your website. But there is, I think, unless I'm mistaken again, but there is also, this isn't the Orchid Society, but the Coastal Georgia Botanical Gardens has their Strawberry Supper on the 30th, I believe, April 30th, mm-hmm. 4 to 7. Okay. Uh, so that's just a, another thing going on out there, if I'm correct about that. So check the yeah. website yeah, we'll be to tearing, make sure about that, too. We'll be but, taking uh, everything down while they're they're enjoying that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. All right. Beginning at four. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. And so, all right. What about you? Where are you from? Uh, I grew up in Delaware. Okay, I, I thought maybe there, there was not a lot of South in your mouth. So, uh. <laughs> oh, I, um, 
Delaware has its own accent that I, my <laughs> mother didn't let me use very often. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> okay. It's, um, it's kind of a southern version of the Baltimore historical accent. A lot of a lot of syllables get dropped and things hmm, like that. <laughs> okay. Well, that sounds southern. All right. Well, so how long have you been here? Uh, I moved here in 2008. And what what may what brought you here, if I may ask? Uh, I moved here to teach biology at Armstrong. Oh, okay. Oh, boy, let's don't get into that. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Well, good. So you're still doing that? No, no, no. Actually, I decided okay. to uh, escape. <laughs> and, okay. Uh, I've been growing orchids for 35 years. Oh, wow. My, my doctoral okay. research was on orchid genetics. Wow. Um, you are and... serious, man. <laughs> you are but, serious um, about I, this. I decided to try something else. Okay. So, I, I happened to luck into a situation where uh, there was a greenhouse that needed some some care. Ah, good. good. That um, was owned by one of the original founders of the Orchid Society, who's well, since passed away. Um, mm. And um, I actually still use that greenhouse, even though that property has actually changed hands. But the new owners have, have graciously allowed me to keep using the space. Nice. So. Nice. Um, okay. It's full. <laughs> I hope to empty it a little bit at the show. Okay. All right. <laughs> Well, you do love yourself some orchids. Yeah, yeah. I was I was an odd kid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was on a farm, but I didn't really have much interest in farming. So in farming per se. But, um, but... I like my my. I showed some interest in a seed catalog one year, and my parents mm. gave me twenty bucks to spend seeds. And suddenly, the vegetable garden was my job for the rest of my childhood. Ah. Um, and it kind of went from there. So well, that was probably a good job. To have. That was a good job. <laughs> so to have, I did my imagine. undergrad in plant science, graduate work in botany, and wow, went on. Man, you 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 definitely got into it. That's great, though. I mean, that's absolutely great. And orchids, you know, orchids are really nice. I mean, all flowers are nice, pretty much, really. But I mean, orchids really are kind of special for sure. They're they're really unique. You can you can use them as an example to understand a lot of things about nature and how it, mm. nature interacts with each other. Um, yeah. Of course, even though they've, they've been able to adapt into so many different environments because they, they tend to specialize a little bit, that also makes individual species really susceptible. And so when you hear about land being cleared, either mm. even here or the, the tropics, mm -hmm. often there, there may be orchids that are only found in, say, one side of a mountain in Brazil. So if they clear that side, it's gone. Wow. Yeah. And there are examples of orchids that are in cultivation that are, they exist in cultivation because one example was found on a cleared tree, and it's the only one that's ever been seen. Wow. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> I mean, so, they are so very uh, it, adaptable there's, and there's a lot sort of, of subjects flexible, you can kind of pull from yeah. um, when you start talking about orchids because there's so many of them and their their biology is really interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that is amazing. I'm learning some things here. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I well, I say I'm hopefully it's sticking in my brain the way my brain's working this morning. I'm not sure, but uh I think I am. Yes. Um and just don't turn your heat on in the summer. Uh, no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, what what about here, particularly thinking here in Savannah locally? I mean, when and of course, obviously, it depends on the weather. Mm -hmm. But I mean, when when do you normally uh, you know plant orchids and or you know and get things going? Um. <sighs> Most of the orchids you're going to be used to are ones that you would grow in a pot. You wouldn't plant them in your landscaping, mm. although there are some orchids that are hardy here uh, that you can grow as a landscape plant. Okay. Um, the most prominent one is, um, I only know it by its Latin name, it's Blatilla striata. It's from China. Okay. China is a fairly temperate climate like here. Yeah, so, yeah, it is very similar. So you can actually find that some and some other orchids, some native, some from other parts of the world that will do okay in gardens hmm. and um unlike some of our some of our native orchids that maybe people are familiar with like lady slippers hmm. they right. can be transplanted and not be dis disrupted too much ah. um, lady slippers are notoriously hard to move because their root systems are really touchy with the things that they interact with hmm. 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 okay 
Hold that thought, if you would. We're going to take a brief break, folks. We won't be long, and we're going to continue some discussion with David Gerald of the Deep South Orchid Society. Hold on just a minute. We'll be right back. This portion of WRUULP Savannah Soundings programming is made possible by a grant from Sentient Bean, offering fair trade coffee, vegan and vegetarian food, and breakfast all day. Located at 13 East Park Avenue, across the street from the tennis courts at Forsyth Park. Our menu and special events listings can be found at sentientbean.com. And we are back. This is WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings, community radio with Global Soul. I am happy to have you listening to Savannah Lexicon this morning. I will uh, quickly go ahead and mention that um, next Tuesday's guest. It will be uh, Karen Jenkins, Executive Director of Savannah Tree Foundation. And uh, the 28th is actually, nationally speaking, Arbor Day. And I know that uh, the Savannah Tree Foundation has a an Arbor Day, Arbor Day activity going on, so that'll be interesting. And a week from today, next Thursday, we will have Roger Moss, Executive Director of Savannah Children's Choir, there is a April 30th uh, uh, concert, uh, Duke Ellington, the Sacred Concerts, that the Savannah Children's Choir will be part of. So that's going to be interesting next week. And uh, also invite you to check out the Facebook page for Savannah Lexicon. Give me uh, give me some some action. Give me some some comments, some whatever you got, I would be happy to listen. Also, really quickly, if you enjoy our programming on WRUULP, please support the station with a donation. As an individual, you can give any amount, become a basic station member, or become a serious fan of the station. To check out membership rates and to donate to the station, go to www.wruu.org slash individual and select to donate monthly or subscribe to an annual membership. Again, to donate to the station, go to www.wruu.org slash individual and select to donate monthly or subscribe to an annual membership. Thank you for listening to and supporting WRUULP and for listening to Savannah Lexicon here this morning and every Tuesday and Thursday morning from 8 till 9. Okay, um, David, and so uh, about the, the, the society, the Deep South Orchid Society, wh- tell us about membership. I mean, uh, membership uh, cost or, or terms of membership or how that works. Well, um, we have annual dues. And for an individual, they're 25. Uh, family membership is 35. Oh, that's so very it's certainly reasonable. very reasonable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we are a nonprofit, so it's basically just to help support the budget for, for doing things like the show throughout the year. Mm-hmm. Um, again, we do meet every month, the second Sunday at 2. And um, th- these types of societies were, were formed early on for people that had an interest in the plants and wanted to learn more, to share information. 
because what you find is that each person tends to have different types of orchids they're interested in. And so mm. they can share what yeah. they like, but they can also share their knowledge about how to grow them, how to get them to flower, yeah. that kind yeah. of thing. Well, apparently there's so many different varieties. that <coughs> There's a lot to learn. <laughs> that, that, you know, well, yeah. And also, I mean, as you say, that different people enjoy different, yep. different yep. ones particularly. So, I mean, with that many, I guess that's not surprising there being so many of mm-hmm. them apparently. And, and uh, as for this event... Um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the <laughs> the twenty eighth, twenty ninth, and thirtieth. Um, what? Just tell us something. It, well, before we go to that, anything else about the society and membership or whatever that you want to particularly mention, or did we did we kind of hit the? Um, we don't we don't take attendance. We certainly hope people join and then come and enjoy yeah, the sure. speakers and the the kind of the companion interaction that goes on with there. People make friends that they yeah, interact sure, with sure. outside of the society. Um, we have members that have been there since the beginning and other folks that have joined recently and everybody kind of <clears throat> learns from the elders and yeah. tries to, we try to get new folks to take a role so that they can become more mm. uh, responsible for mm-hmm. the society itself. Mm-hmm. And we have a board that changes uh, uh, Periodically, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I, I became president last year, and I, no one's talked about a new vote. So I guess I'm president for a little while longer. <laughs> you, you may be president for life. You, you may, David. You, you just don't know it. You're, you're president for life, I think. Uh, but um, <clears throat> uh, we we have we have folks in the society that um, help to take care of the greenhouse, the the orchid greenhouse that's out at the the gardens. Mm. That actually is one of the that's biggest right. draws yeah. out there, and then yeah. the the variety of orchids that are in there means that there's almost always something in flower. Yeah. Um, and and uh, men, women, um, it, some of both. I think we're probably pretty close to a fifty fifty split. Really, and some of the members are couples that yeah. each may have their own interest in what what they grow, but it's a hobby they share as a couple. Right. Right. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty broad mix. Not a bad hobby, you know. I mean, it's it's uh, you're, you're dealing with nature and something that's beautiful, and uh, hey, yeah, it's, it's not yeah, a bad and it's not a bad hobby to have. <clears throat> kind of, if you look on social media, you can see that there's even it's not really quite the same thing, but there's communities on there, Facebook pages that are oh, I'm sure that yeah. are dedicated to certain types of plants and certain ways of growing them and yeah. those kind of things. Yeah. So yeah. any of those, whether it's a, a local society like ours or those those social media groups, it's a way of sharing information. Okay. And what about uh, just what I started to say is uh, going back to the to the event and the vendors and that sort of thing. Can you can you tell us a little bit more about that? <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, we actually have a really good mix, and some of them have been with us for um, a number of years. Others have been in just the last couple, and we have some that, as far as my history, which is relatively short with the society, are, mm-hmm. are new to me uh, as yeah. far as the show. Um, and, and the vendors are actually from more widespread than the society, so we've got folks from Florida and up into North Carolina. Huh? Um, so... I've actually got them alphabetically. Okay, all right. Well, <laughs> on my list. How many are there? There's, there's, there's seven. Okay, good. All right, um, we can handle some. So we have uh, EFG orchids out of Deland, Florida, and okay. they've got a, a big growing space, and they tend to grow really good quality plants that are like the ones you've seen in the the grocery store, but uh, maybe different coloring. They tend to keep on top of what's kind of new and exciting in the hybridizing trends. Mm -hmm. Uh, He also will often bring some really beautifully grown house plants that are good companions for the orchids, things that are different. You may not have seen that often in the general marketplace. Um, He actually comes from a a very long line of orchid growers that was based out of the Midwest um, back decades so it's interesting to see that family history continue. Um, then we have Hicks orchids and supplies, and he's going to be bringing just supplies, so potting mixes and pots and all kinds of things that you okay. need to help you grow fertilizer. Um, then uh, new, at least for maybe the first time, or it's been a while, is John's Islands orchids <clears throat> out of John's Island, South Carolina. Oh, okay. And. Um, is it- I thought it was, is it St. John? It's just John? Just John's just Island. Just John's yeah. Island. Okay, what am I thinking of? Right. <clears throat> he right. tends to grow mostly species orchids, so things that you could go someplace in the wild and find the exact same thing there, um, not as many hmm. hybrids. So he'll have a different selection. 
then we have a, a local grower, Live Oak Orchids. Uh, they used to have a shop in the Savannah Mall, but the owner is in the process of retiring. But she's mm. one of our founding members, and she still wow. still sells. Um, wow. Okay. She sells her plants at um, Hester and Zipperer on Skidaway. Okay. Um, okay. And she tends to have a good mix of, of, again, what you're used to at the grocery store and then some, some different things as well. Um, then Marble Branch Farms from Valhalla, South Carolina. Okay. It's towards Tennessee. Wow. Um, okay. That's, and, that's a good ways um, off. He brings a really unique selection. Again, mostly species. Um, he does his own hybridizing, and he hybridizes with plants that really no one else is using. And so his things are almost completely unique. Hmm. Um, beautiful, different stuff. Um, okay. It's nice, nice that he, he has his own niche. Um, his property also has a natural bog, and so he started growing lots of carnivorous plants. And so if you're <laughs> interested in those, he'll have hmm. those with him as well. Oh, really? Uh, not orchids, but really different. Um, okay. Cobra lilies and all kinds of other things that are there. They survive by getting nutrients from catching other things. Right, right. So I've seen those bad boys. Yeah, he has yeah. some. He has some different things. But uh, but but I like. I just like the idea of being able to say that I'm from Valhalla. Yeah, you know? yeah. His, unfortunately, his name's not Thor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that would be something. <laughs> um, then Oglethorpe Orchids is local. Um, sure. They tend to mostly specialize in um, plant service, contract work, doing custom arrangements using orchids and air mm. plants and those types of things. Okay. Um, and then Owens Orchids is from Pisgah Forest, North Carolina, and they're again ah, a, a multi generational. That's a nice business. area. Um, yeah. And they tend to have um, phalaenopsis, like we've talked about before. And then mm -hmm. they also have a history of growing really large, beautiful cattleyas and those kinds of things, which mm. are kind of the old uh, Mamie Eisenhower orchid corsages with ah, big ruffly flowers and those right, kind of things. Right, so right. everyone has a slightly different mix, some more, more diverse than others, but the selection will be really, really good. Sounds like it. Sounds like it. All right, I'm going to put you on the spot here. I don't know. This is <laughs> this is a really tough question, but I'm just I'm just curious. I always, whenever I meet anybody who's just really, uh, you know, passionate about a particular thing, whether it be music or writing or or you know whatever it happens to be, you know, I, I just love to to try to get some sense of you know what it is about their particular uh their particular thing that they love so much that you know that they really love i mean is that is that something that you can can express i mean what is it about well flowers in general or or orchids in particular that just is so special to you whether it's the the things themselves and or the the process of working with them or whatever it is any any uh Anything coming to mind there? Um, I think it's probably a little different for every orchid grower. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I and I grew up on a farm. Uh, I found well, that, that I was interested yeah. in kind of nature in general. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one of my brothers at one point referred to me as the, the great white hunter because I would run around the countryside with a butterfly net collecting butterflies oh, to, yeah? to mount okay. to put into so a the, case. The whole butterfly thing, too. <laughs> okay. Good, good, good. <laughs> and I had the Roger Torrey Peterson bird guides. Well, and, of course. Um, all of those. <laughs> um, I, I was interested in plants, but I knew nothing about orchids until I got to college. And I was a friend oh. of mine who um, on a trip to Hawaii with his family had seen orchids for sale and had brought some home, and mm -hmm. that started his hobby. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, he ended up working uh, while at college for the uh, estate of the wealthiest woman in Delaware, who was one of part of the DuPont family. Oh, but wow. she, she had her Damn own greenhouses and staff that lived on the estate that managed the greenhouses and would mm. always keep her estate house in uh, flower with lots of orchids blooming and so when they would uh, <clears throat> they would divide the plants that got too big there were often lots of extras and so he'd come home from working there and go hey try this and, <laughs> and hand me a piece and that's kind of how it got interesting. started so by the time i finished college i maybe had 40 orchids and i was growing them under lights in my college apartment wow um and it kind of went from there 
That's, now, now that's I have incredible. a 20 by 40 greenhouse. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, well, you know, I mean, yeah, I can see. I mean, as you say, you grew up on a farm. You were interested in plants and yeah, yeah and, and butterflies. And, of course, butterflies and flowers go together. So, <laughs> so They kind of do, at least. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a connection. There's at least a, an implicit connection. Yeah, that, that definitely ties in. I don't – there's not – there's not too many butterflies specifically that I know they're orchid pollinators. There's lots of different things. Mm, uh, even, just, some are even pollinated by uh, uh, flies that think they're going to meet because the flowers actually smell like rotting meat. <laughs> wow. Most people don't grow those in their homes. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> I don't think that's a good a There are good people that, there are people that love the them because they're so different. <laughs> those, those flowers are... They and smell they're furry like and rotting they smell meat? like meat. Yes. No kidding. And wow. and it's not just orchids. There's actually some some other plants out there that mimic that to attract flies as pollinators. God. They'll, that's they'll, they'll that's do what incredibly. They need to yeah, reproduce. I mean, you know, I mean, that is incredibly uh, what creative. I guess. I mean, man, yeah. oh man, oh and man. I, and I said earlier that um, because orchids are are so many, they're so diverse. If you start looking around, there's all kinds of weird little phenomena that they've they've used to be successful. And I, I mentioned the, the small mm, seeds yeah, where they just throw yeah, out yeah. millions, and there may be a mm. tiny number that survive. But right, right. There's even examples where some of those some of the species have seeds that when they they land on a surface and there's a little bit of water, they have these little hairs that unwind and clamp onto the surface so they don't <laughs> blow any place else. Wow. <laughs> Golly, it's truly <laughs> astonishing when you start um, to think about there, it. I mean. There's some that, I mean, I mentioned attracting flies. There's others where um, some of the plants may have male flowers and other have female flowers, so they only have one sex or the other. Mm. And um, the flowers of, of one of those will, uh, it has a scent that actually certain types of bees use they collect that scent and then they use that scent to attract their own mates mm. but in the process of collecting the scent they also pollinate the flowers hmm. 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 man oh man oh man oh man the natural world is just uh-huh. absolutely <laughs> astonishing amazing and several other adjectives i'll throw out there i mean golly it's absolutely incredible all right. Is there another? Is there a, another sort of event of any kind coming up before the year is out, or, or is this kind of this is the one and and you and you go for it all right now? This this is the big one. Okay. Uh, most orchid societies, I think, tend to do one show a year. Yeah. Um, we're we're as as we're getting these new members in through the show and getting a, a, a younger group who can. Uh, join the society in a way that doesn't mean the same people have to do the same same work all the time mm-hmm. and spread mm-hmm. the wealth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're trying to get to a point where we can um, bring more invited speakers in uh, from other parts of the country. Okay. Um, some of those are professional growers. Some of those have different histories with orchids. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, I remember when I was, this was quite a while ago, but... There's a, there was a physician named Dr. Fowley, and he was an orchid grower and, of course, had the, the means to travel. He also was a bit of a savant and could learn a language within about three months. Wow. And so he, would, he came and would tell stories about these plants that he discovered that had, were named after him. Wow. But be part of cool. getting into where, where the plant was was to learn the language, and he, he had stories yeah. of getting into parts of China that weren't accessible to non-natives but he amazing learned the language and was able to pass himself off as a son of missionaries that had grown up there <laughs> um, so you re- you end up getting all kinds of characters when you can uh, not only have your own members present but also bring in some invited folks that may yeah. be able to tell a different story absolutely the website again is uh... deep south orchid society.com okay uh, we also have facebook page just search for Deep okay. South Orchid Society, and Good. we've just started doing a, an Instagram account, which ah. doesn't have a lot on it yet, but it'll be okay. growing. And it's you just throw all those words together, Deep South Orchid Society, into yeah. one long, long name for for Instagram. Okay, and it is, but but it's uh, well, I mean, for the the website, it is dot com. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, we are getting ready for the final segment here, and. Uh, uh, David, if you want to hang around, that's fine. If you need to leave, that's fine too. I sure appreciate in any case, uh, you coming in today and, sure. and talking with us about this and good luck 
Oh, thank you. With, We're uh, hoping we had 800 people plus last year. Wow. We're hoping for well really? over 1,000 this year. Golly, that's a lot of orchid lovers. Yeah. Yeah, that's, it was great. That's great. That is great. The 28th, the, 29th, and 30th. Yeah. And the admission is the same as the Botanic Gardens. There's nothing extra. So oh, you so can, you, oh, you can visit okay. the show and then look through, throughout the gardens, which I'm sure has tons of things in flower now. Excellent. Excellent. All right, and uh, and for those of you who are going to hang out, we're just going to take just a short break. I've got a little commentary to make. Uh, uh, hopefully have time to also throw out some things that are going on in the city, as I normally do. But I do want to make this little commentary about the whole Lucas Theater thing. And so uh, there will be that. And just hang on with us for a minute. We won't be going long. This portion of WRUULP Savannah Soundings programming is made possible by a grant from Sentient Bean, offering fair trade coffee, vegan and vegetarian food, and breakfast all day. Located at 13 East Park Avenue, across the street from the tennis courts at Forsyth Park. Our menu and special events listings can be found at sentientbean.com. We are back, and I'm going to take this opportunity to give, once again, the general disclaimer, the viewpoints expressed in the following program and uh, the rest of the program are not necessarily those of WRUU, its license holder, or its staff. So I just wanted to take a moment. This is unusual for me. I've not really done this kind of uh, sort of extended commentary, but I, I was struck as as so many uh, have been with this situation regarding the Lucas. And so a little statement regarding that. The firing last week of the entire staff of the Lucas Theater has caused quite a stir in the community and in the media here in Savannah. I doubt I can shed any additional light, unfortunately, in the matter, but I would like to comment on the situation nonetheless. Uh, I'd hope to get actually some, uh, you know, some comment, some input uh, from one or more of uh, the people fired, as well, really, as additional comment from a representative of SCAD. Unfortunately, though, I requested conversation with a couple of the fired Lucas X employees and with the representative of SCAD. I've not been able to get any comment from either side. The SCAD media relations um, contact I reached out to sent me a brief email indicating that she would call me yesterday, but I've Receive no phone call. Uh, the apparent unwillingness from all these parties to speak to the issue with me or other media uh, folks. Uh, the terse public statement by SCAD after the incident. 
Um, and, you know, making the, the Lucas Theater Facebook page unavailable to the general public as it is now, uh, one would assume that's by the Lucas Theater Board, which, of course, the majority of the board members are SCAD-related uh, individuals. So all of this is indicative of how troublesome this scenario is and how concerned both sides seem to be, perhaps, of, I don't know, repercussions. I, I don't know. It's odd that nobody really wants to say much about it. So, you know, we're left with a lot of unanswered questions and concerns. First off, I want to say that I think the way the firings were handled was shameful. This is not the first time SCAD, or in this case, the SCAD-dominated board of the Lucas Theater, not the first time employees have been fired suddenly, and apparently for no, you know, not for poor job performance, and, you know, not shown the sheer decency of letting them into their workplace to collect their own possessions and leave. I simply do not believe it's necessary here in close-knit and modestly-sized Savannah to handle firings in such a reprehensible fashion. Judging by comments on social media, uh, reporting in some of the local print media and conversations I've had with locals, there are a whole lot of people in Savannah who are of like mind. For example, comments I was able to glean from the Lucas Theater Facebook page before it was made unavailable to the general public. Um, Robert Ross Peary, and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing names correctly. Forgive me if I'm not. Uh, I'm just reading some excerpts of some of these comments. Since SCAD decided to fire staff without notice, some learning they lost their jobs through a newspaper, no respect. I will no longer be a patron of this theater. I hope the owners realize what they uh, have done further alienates themselves from the community. You seem detached. You, being SCAD, seem detached from Savannah, yet you insist on directly controlling and or owning all of her. Uh, Travis Spangenberg, ingratitude at its worst. James Q. Farringer, the Lucas employees, have worked so hard to give so much back to the community, it is absolutely appalling that SCAD has chosen to treat them this way. Shannon Elizabeth, it's disgraceful that SCAD was heartless and dismantled a really great part of downtown Savannah and the community. Gary Shelby, I don't understand why management wouldn't have given the current staff the chance to continue employment if they performed effectively in their current jobs. At least give them 45 to 60 days notice to search for new employment. Very cold treatment. Won't rest well with the local community. Obviously. Uh, Bridget Tunstall. As an alumni, I am very upset that SCAD this, did this to their staff. It is insulting to see the hard work that the current staff put in just get thrown aside like that. David Griffiths. What an amazing staff the Lucas had. Wonderful people who truly cared. I'll never set foot in a place again due to the actions of the board. How you treat people matters. Shame on you all. Well, despite efforts to apparently silence, if you will, those people's reactions to the firings, they continue to be heard here on WRUU, of course, uh, elsewhere on social media and in public discourse. Now, again, it was technically speaking the Lucas Theater Board that did the firings, but that is a distinction of little meaning, really, considering the majority status of SCAD on the board. The reason given for the firings was simply to, quote, increase efficiency and, quote, mitigate financial losses. <coughs> all right, well, besides the reprehensible treatment of the Lucas staff, which by all accounts I've ever run across were people who did their jobs well and loved the Lucas dearly, what is the financial situation with the Lucas? Well, we don't know. No financial info was offered when SCAD made this disturbing announcement. The theater just had a nice run of events during the Savannah Music Festival. The Lucas doesn't pay city or county taxes. And SCAD didn't assume any of the property's debt when it took control of the Lucas board and made the theater a SCAD affiliate in an amended agreement in 2002. This is according to Jim Marekas. Jim, I hope I got your name right. Editor of Connect Savannah. SCAD did, however, take over the theater's operations and attendant expenses. Why is the Lucas apparently just never able to pay for itself for any significant period of time? Again, I'm afraid I don't have the answers, but there sure seems to be some questions 
uh, that could use some answers. The Lucas Board and SCAD ought to release financials on the Lucas and let Savanians see just why the drastic step just undertaken was deemed necessary. Why is the Lucas now in this ostensibly terrible financial shape? Also, it should be more specific about just what financial contributions they intend to maintain into the future, as they've indicated in a general sense that they would uh, uh, continue to support it in some, in some manner to some degree. And though it's a separate issue, I can't help but bring up another troubling recent concern about SCAD operations that appeared in an opinion column in the Savannah Morning News a little over a month ago. Did you see this? Kenneth Zapp a professor emeritus at Metropolitan State University and a mentor with SCORE Savannah, wrote an opinion column indicating his concern that SCAD uh, risk losing its nonprofit status because of the exorbitant, in my opinion, compensation received by the school's president, Paula Wallace, along with very high cash reserves for the school as a whole. Zapp really referenced uh, in his piece the article that appeared uh, in the Wall Street Journal in early March on uh, Paula Scad's, uh, pa- excuse me, Paula Wallace's Scad compensation. According to that article and to financial information available at the GuideStar.org website, Wallace received total compensation in 2015 of 9.6 million dollars. $9.6 million. Now, to give you some sense of the perspective, the president of Harvard, apparently 13 times the size of SCAD, Harvard is, certainly the most prestigious university or certainly one of the very most prestigious uh, universities in the nation, in the world. The president of SCAD, Paula Wallace, makes $9.5 million. The president of Harvard makes just over a million. Now, SCAD as a whole also had a surplus after all expenses of $64 million that year, apparently quite high for a nonprofit, it would seem so to me, and has cash and investments of $124.5 million. Unnecessarily high cash reserves is also something that could threaten SCAD's nonprofit status, according to Zap. Now, you know, I'm not saying that the one thing has anything to do with the other. The firings in apparently dire financial straits uh, at the Lucas and the Paula Wallace compensation package and other factors, those, those are two different distinct operations, though certainly both are obviously associated with SCAD. Uh, some of Paula Wallace's compensation, it should be noted, was in deferred earnings based on past contributions to the establishment and development of the school, and it was approved by a consulting company. I guess SCAD picked out the consulting company, of course, and subsequently approved by the SCAD board. Still, the pay seems exceedingly high. The surplus seems exceedingly high to me. And whatever anybody thinks about it, anything jeopardizing SCAD's nonprofit status is another issue of concern regarding SCAD. So, you know, look, SCAD has had an undeniably salutary effect on Savannah, establishing a highly regarded school of art and design, buying and making admirable use of dozens of buildings in the city that were not being well used or in some cases not used at all. School has brought in a steady stream of creative young people to the city who have energized it and broadened its cultural horizons. SCAD has brought in considerable monies to Savannah that wouldn't have piled up otherwise. No denying the good that SCAD has done for Savannah, but why must SCAD so often act like a control-minded bully? I don't have time to delve into the school's past, and I think it's fair to say rather troubled past uh, to some extent, particularly if you go a ways back and, uh, and here recently. There have been a number of occasions through the decades when SCAD ownership and management have acted in ways that seem unnecessarily cold and calculating and overly control freakish and utterly unconcerned about the sensibilities of local residents. The ugly and, to say the least, unceremonious firing of the five here recently with the Lucas, apparently hardworking Lucas-loving staff, is the latest example. All right, general disclaimer, I've got to rush and get out of here. The viewpoints expressed in the preceding program were not necessarily those of WRUU, its license holder, or its staff. And 
This is WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings, community radio with global soul.